Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Optimizing Car Performance Modifications. What I want to do in this video, and the next video as well, is talk about measuring car performance on the road. And I want to cover some techniques that I'm pretty confident you'll have never seen before. So, how do we go about measuring car performance? Well, one common approach is to use a stopwatch. How long does it take the car to get from a standstill to 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour? Uh, that's pretty good on an automatic transmission car where you can get away without much wheel spin in most cars. Much harder to do consistently in a manual transmission car. But you can also do rolling time splits. The time it takes to accelerate between two different speeds, 60 to 90 kilometers an hour or 50 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour, things of that sort. But the trouble with using a stopwatch is it doesn't actually tell you where in the rev range you're getting that change in power. It's a sort of indirect way of working things out. So is there a better way? Well, quite a long time ago now, I discovered a testing technique which just blew me away. And I didn't come up with the idea. A company called Analytical Performance in the US came up with an instrument that I thought had enormous potential. That instrument was called the G-curve. And what it is, is it's a simple curved tube with a ball in it, and inside that curved tube is a damping fluid. Now, if we tilt it, you can see that the ball moves. If we tilt it, you can see the ball moves. When we are accelerating a car, the ball will move in the tube in the same way. Now, probably you're not going to be able to see it. If I go like that, if I go like that, you can see the ball actually moves in the tube. This is an accelerometer. A analog accelerometer, not a digital one, and it measures what is called instantaneous acceleration. Now, that needs a bit of discussion, a bit of thought. Let's imagine you're driving down the road in second gear. You're doing only a thousand RPM and you put your foot flat to the floor. The car accelerates. When it gets to say 3000 RPM, exactly how much is it accelerating at that point? Now, the acceleration at a designated specific RPM is called instantaneous acceleration. It's the amount of acceleration occurring at that precise engine speed in that gear. That's what the G-curve measures. Now, how would you use it? Well, this particular device, you can see it's got three holes, and into those holes attach suction caps. It goes on the side window. You can look at it. You can see what it's reading as you're accelerating. Now, a bit hard if you're, if you're by yourself. Uh, always use a passenger to do that reading off of the values. Now, you might say, okay, well, you find out how hard you're accelerating at 3,000 RPM, so what? Well, what you do is you measure your acceleration, your instantaneous acceleration, at each engine speed. So, if you're the driver and you've got your passenger reading the, the G-curve, and you don't need to use a G-curve, I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, you drive down the road, you go to the lowest engine speed you can, say 1,000 RPM in one gear, say second gear, you put your foot flat to the floor, and every 1,000 RPM you go, now, now, now. And at each of those nows, the person in the passenger seat writes down what the value is on the G-curve. So you end up with a, a, a list of accelerations at a list of different engine speeds. Now, that's your acceleration curve that your engine is providing on the road in real life. That takes into account how quickly can your turbo boost if it's, a, if it's a turbo car. That takes into account how good are the intercooler flows, again, if it's a turbo or perhaps supercharged car. That takes into account aerodynamic drag. That takes into account everything. It's the actual acceleration on the road at those different engine speeds. Now, you think, okay, right, well, you get a table and you draw a graph. I, I use Excel to do it, which makes it a pretty graph. So what? Well, let's say you take your car back home and you fit a new exhaust, a high-flow exhaust. Now, you go and do exactly the same test as you did before. If the car is going better, you will measure harder instantaneous acceleration those acceleration figures will be higher. You can see where in the power curve, where in the, the engine speed range, you've got the performance gain. And you can also see where you might have lost some. So people talk about, 
oh, it's a too big an exhaust, it'll lose power down the bottom, now, bottom of the rev range. Now, I've actually never seen that. I think that's an old wives' tale. But if it, in fact, were occurring, you could see it by doing this. Now, what's the exact procedure by which you do so? Do you have to get a G-curve? Analytical performance is no longer in business, so you really can't. Is there a cheap substitute that you can use instead of using the G-curve? Um, the answer to all of those things will be in the next video, but just as a, as a quick preview, here's a device that I use, and this is available very, very cheaply. Anyone who sells boating supplies has one of these. It's sold as a clinometer to measure the angle of heel of a boat, and we can use it in exactly the same way as the G-curve to measure and plot real road performance through the rev range. I've been using the technique for oh, 25 years, I've used it on high performance cars, I've used it on low performance cars. It's taught me some extraordinary lessons over that time and it's never cost me anything other than the buying of the instrument in the first place. We'll cover more on that in our second video. Thank you.